welcome to Wrestling and Everything Coast to Coast with your host, Singular, Buddy Sotelo Esquire, and a man that I've known for now about 30 years. And, I mean, I say a man because it's kind of, you used to be a kid to me, and now you really are. You know, you got the gray beard and all that. Jesus Cruz, uh, very, now becoming a renowned Hispanic film director and producer here in uh, Northern California. Very glad to have you as our guest because this last week um, was the debut of Bicentennial, the Mark Bison Smith documentary. And wow, what a film. What a film. And it stars, you know, a lot of people. I, I, I can't say I'm starring in it. But it's, I do have a, a nice role in in explaining how Mark became Super Destroyer 2000 and what it was like to work with him. And uh, it was it was beautiful and, and emotional. And, and I know a work of love for you. And uh, uh, so you want to explain to the audience a little bit about, well, first of all, how you came up with the idea and then how that idea moved forwards into becoming a full-fledged documentary. Uh, yeah, so the uh, idea started right when the pandemic, around the, when the pandemic started in 2020-ish, right? Or 19? What was it now? I can't remember. 20. Now. 20. 20, yeah. So, um, you know, I ha I have collected a lot of footage alongside with Paul Ponte and Luis Costa of indie wrestling from when I met you, like in the, you know, uh, early 2000s APW, but even before that, the late 90s at Big Time Wrestling. So we would always collect all this footage. You know, we were always rolling. We were always filming everything and including like uh, promo classes with with uh, Bison and Vinny and Donovan and everyone else. And, you know, we have all this footage. And during the pandemic, I decided to start uh, digitizing everything and putting it on hard drives. That way, we you know, some of the tapes were already kind of getting messed up. So I'm glad I was able to get all that footage out. And then uh, Paul started the um, podcast where we would have uh wrestlers from around that mainly from that era you know from that 2000s indie uh bay area uh era and uh so yeah we just decided to you know what let's do uh the first one was on michael modest let's do a documentary on michael modest and i i kind of hate calling them documentaries because a documentary to me it's you have to do some investigation you have to go out and you know <clears throat> film every every single person but during the pandemic you know a lot of them were through zoom or or through video calls um modest we were able to drive up there to weaverville and interview him so we did the full feature documentary on modest that got a lot a lot of attention uh we were on pro wrestling illustrated magazine you know they rated us like five suplexes five out of five suplexes uh so that's kind of cool you know you always you you grew up uh, reading those magazines and now you, one of your work is uh is on there uh, i think that was kind of cool and then uh we had access to all of uh, Bay Area Wrestling's footage, you know, Shane Cody's dad, Woody Farmer. And so that was a no-brainer. It's like, man, we got all this stuff. And uh, so putting that together was really fun, you know, talking to uh, those old school wrestlers like uh, Shane Cody, Danny Garcia, The Mask, uh, you know, guys like that. And then not only that, but, you know, uh, Crash Holly got his start there, too. So it was a lot of his footage before he went to APW. And then, of course, Chris Jericho was on in that as well and uh just sharing the trailer of the bay area wrestling on twitter and tagging chris jericho he contacted us immediately that that he wanted to be a part of it and just to send him some questions over and he had the uh, aew uh tv crew <clears throat> uh, film his part of the interview for that so so that was a lot of, you know that was really cool we weren't expecting that um so that came out and then uh yeah just had all this footage of bison a lot of that you know um backstage footage i would call it and stuff like that so i'm like well you know let's 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 do one on bison you know he was always a really great friend i uh, have a lot of memories you know of him uh obviously we weren't like super super close because i was you know i wasn't a wrestler but he always looked out for me even when he went to puerto rico he he contacted me we were we'd always uh chat on aol i know we were talking about aol earlier but yeah we were talking on instant messenger and uh he would he told me like dude you should come out here and work the the tv down here like be part of the of the production crew over here in Puerto Rico. And I was young, you know, I was in my early 20s. So I was like, nah, I don't know. You know, I don't know if I want to go. I live out there. But he always, like, extended that to me. So I always thought that was APW cool. Bison. That was his screen name, you know. I yeah. remember when it would pop up on the little corner thing on AOL. And I was like, yes, Mark's on 
online and you can talk to them. So let's let's rewind all the way back and yeah. like get to how you became into doing video and 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 your love of wrestling overall. How did that sure. all occur? Uh, and I think Paul uh, might be trying to log in now. Just to call okay, him. let me. Let me let me try to add him, but go ahead and, and yeah. give us your. So yeah, no, uh, it started um, the wrestling and my uh, TV filmmaking career started at the same time actually, uh, in about around ninety six ninety seven. I attended. Um, uh, it was a school called Mission Valley Regional Occupation Program, which was kind of like pushing students to to uh, choose a career if they already kind of know what they what they were doing you know they had like auto body shop they had a uh, nursing they had and they had a tv production class so i i went to that and the class was in the newark tv studios where woody farmer had his uh show uh that their show ended around 93 and then i came in in around 96 so i missed that part but then kirk white took it over and Kirk White started doing his big time wrestling shows from that TV studio. So at the same time that I was learning how to use cameras and all the audio lighting equipment, I was also involved in the taping of the new big time wrestling um, TV shows. So then I would be the one that would do the highlight videos of the shows and the back, you know, backstage promos and, and all that stuff. So at that young age, I was like seven, 16, 17, I was already editing pro wrestling pretty much full time. And then just from there, uh, you know, uh, filming the live shows for Kirk White and getting to interview like an Undertaker, uh, Owen Hart, uh, Stone Cold, Hardy Boys, like The Rock, you name it. So it all kind of intertwined from there. And then I went to APW in 2000 alongside Louis Costa and, and, and Paul Ponte, and we did some work with them as well. So, you know, uh, Kirk White passed away just, uh, uh, you know, about a year ago. A year and a half. Well, no, about well, about it was three, four a year. months. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, what was your, what was it like working with Kirk White? You know, we haven't really talked a lot about Kirk White on this show because right. my experience with him with him was pretty brief. I only managed one single match with him, although I met him on a number of occasions. Um. Just my own personal experience with Kirk was that he was a very weird individual that that you could be having a conversation with and the conversation that Kirk was having with you was a completely different conversation than the conversation you were having with Kirk. He had something <laughs> else going on inside his head every time you talked to him that was not the same thing as what you thought you were telling him. And it usually involved money. It usually involved some kind of angle that involved money. Am I kind of on pay on, on point there with Kirk White. Yeah, no, no. By the way, Paul, thank you for joining us today. Hi. To have you on. Just Can we'll you introduce hear? you in just a sec, but I was asking a, a question about Kirk White and 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 your thoughts. So you can join in after uh, Jesus gives his thoughts here. But yeah, no, no, you're you're hundred uh, percent correct on that. There was a, <laughs> there was a lot of like are we talking about the same thing right now? Uh, so Kirk did help me a lot when I started promoting, like, you know, he, uh, helped me with the ring and, and, you know, getting me guys and, and stuff like that. Cause he saw the, the success we were having doing Lucha Libre shows in San Jose. So, you know, Kirk's not, you know, he's, he's all about money. So he's smart. He, he saw that opportunity with me too. Like, oh shoot. You know, like they're, they're drawing a lot, you know, let me, let me put up some masks. Let me, uh, you know, uh, do this and that. But, you know, he, he did show me a lot. Of, of what to do and what not to do uh, promoting wise. Uh, but yeah, as far as conversations, I remember having conversations with him because we used to rent his uh, school too to do Lucha Libre training. And I'd have a conversation about him, uh, about something with him. And then he'd be, <laughs> he'd like be pretending to, to, to pitch. Like he's a big baseball guy. And during that conversation, he was just working on his form just, uh, you know, throwing nothing. He was just like in the air and he was very concentrated. I'm like, is he, is he listening to me? Does he? <laughs> and then, uh, but yeah, that was, I guess that was, that was just how it was. So thank you for joining us, Paul. Uh, this is Paul Ponte, who um, not only had a long standing podcast and talk show, are you still, you're still doing it, aren't you? Uh, the podcast, not so much. Uh, during COVID, it was a lot easier to find time. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? That's how this all got started. But you also have the indie handshake stuff you're doing, right? Yes. Along with uh, Hazes, right? Yes, absolutely. And 
And those those have been great. I really, really love those videos. It really, I'm on a few of them. And it brings me back backwards in time. It is a beautiful time capsule. I want to thank you guys for making those available to those of us who are performing and, and to the general public. But uh, I was just asking um, uh, uh, Jesus about how he got involved in wrestling in general. And we talked a little bit about, you know, the forming of the uh, 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 of the uh, Bison Smith documentary, which was wonderful, by the way. I wanted to thank you for your participation in that, too. So. Um, how do you both collaborate on making the Bison Smith documentary? Want to kind of you can go ahead first, Paul. Uh, well, it's interesting. It was kind of uh, we 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 always talked about like what the next project's going to be, and we kind of like talked about a few of them. Uh, there was a few. I we had a few ideas rolling around. Some of them a little bit more ambitious than others. So it's kind of like, well, which one do we think is feasible to do now? Which one would be a good idea to do now? You guys have been friends for a long, long time, haven't you? Yeah, it's go over 20 years now, I guess it would be. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, you guys already knew each other before I met you. And now that's moving into 20 years. So it's uh, frightening to think about that. Yeah. It's true. Could be getting close to 30 eventually. So, you know. Paul still doesn't have gray on his beard, though. I know. I was going <laughs> to say, your, your beard's slightly more gray than it used to be, Jesus. <laughs> So, so yeah, sorry for interrupting, but I wanted to, to, I never asked that question before. So, so you were asking what, thinking about what to do next. Yeah. And, uh, we always had an idea to do something about Bison in mind, Jesus specifically, because, you know, he, obviously he was a friend to all of us and, uh, you know, I used to be his webmaster for his website. Uh, that's where we got the journals from him in Japan and stuff like that was he sent me those, uh, he sent me a bunch of wrestling magazines from Japan, like just you know, a top guy like inside the ring and outside the ring. So it was kind of like we want the, the, the idea behind when we started Indie Handshake at, in the beginning was, of course, just interviews. And it was to interview people we knew. After that, once we started going into more of like making documentaries and stuff like that, it was kind of like, well, we need it was to shine the light on kind of unsung heroes, uh, especially in wrestling in indie wrestling. You know, that's why we started with Michael Modest. It's kind of like, oh, like. You know, to the general public who's not like an indie wrestling nerd like us, <laughs> a lot of people will be like, Michael Modest, is that the guy from Beyond the Mat? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like we wanted to go into more like his entire career. After that, it's like Bay Area Wrestling is like, oh, here's this, you know, this tiny promotion. And then also about Woody Farmer. You know, again, once again, if you're a huge territory wrestling nerd, you obviously know who Woody Farmer is. But the average wrestling Joe, you know, they might have heard the name, but they don't really know. So I think it's kind of like, and then Bison Smith, of course, apparently, and you can tell on the YouTube comments, man, was he big in Puerto Rico because <laughs> uh, that seems to be on Twitter and everything like that. The most people who who seem to be commenting on are either people who are super into promising Noah or people who are from Puerto Rico. Uh, but America, you know, unless you were really into the early, early ROH stuff, you know, it's it's. You know, maybe some people didn't get a chance to see him. Now on like wrestling gift Twitter is basically people are like sharing clips of his stuff and they're like him doing these crazy lariats and like rocking guys. And everyone's like, man, this guy was amazing. Bison Smith, just amazing. Da, da, da. It's like it's cr strange that he's more appreciated uh, on the Internet now more than when he was alive. It's It's nuts. But that was one of the reasons it was to shine a light on someone who obviously was not just a great talent, but a really a really good dude. Yeah, no, it's it it is a shame. I I always knew he had phenomenal talent. I was always amazed that the WWE and the the uh, WCW, neither one of them thought to give him some kind of a spot there. And that you know, I think if he was in AEW right now, you know, he'd probably be a big star because they they don't have anyone of his kind. Of, I mean, maybe like Luchasaurus, but I mean, there's not a lot of guys. Who have that kind of physique and size, especially in AEW, you know, that that that, that have the and, and the the skill that he had, you know, that was one thing that he, because he believed so much in the Japanese style, and that you know, it, Mark took from what I always remember, he took what he did in the ring seriously, except for that one Ring of Honor match that you guys talked about, and I thought that was pretty gutsy that you you went into that. And and mentioned you know that he that's that is the only match and I worked so many shows with Mark that he ever didn't give 
his all, and he did that on purpose. You know, was it? Was it how, how was your? How were your thoughts on 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 revealing that particular episode? Um. I mean, it was, you know, I, I feel like I had to put it in there. Can you hear me, by the way? I had to change yeah, it. Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I feel like it was important to have in there to show the transition of a a APW and Iron and, and what happened there. Otherwise, people would, you know, that's why I had to put little inserts of like, oh, around this time, you know, uh, Bison, Modest, and Donovan were still working in Japan because otherwise – Doing a documentary like this, you also have to keep in mind that a lot of people that don't know about wrestling are watching. So you have to, you know, there's little words in there, too, that I've thought about. Should we put a definition, like when they said Mark, not as his name, but as like a wrestling Mark or work or stuff like that. You always kind of think, like, should I put a little, like, dictionary definition in there? Or, But, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, uh, I think that's why I, I put that in there, not for, like, oh, let's find out. You know, I think everyone already knew. You know, it was a work, but uh, we had to put it in there just to show what happened, like the aftermath of that. So tell me, guys, tell me, guys, like, how did it go from the idea to actually making the documentary? How did it how did it move forwards? And then what sort of process did you use to come up with the final product? If you can walk people through what that was all about. Well, I think the main thing in the beginning was uh seeing if his parents would be up for it i mean they've been very nice i've been this yeah. project helped get me in touch with them and i want to thank you guys for that because uh they're really wonderful people and and especially flo is really one of the nicest ladies out there and uh we've had many great conversations that i never had when mark was alive you know it it, it was because of this process that, you know, I really got in touch with them. So I wanted to thank you for that. So, yeah, that was wonderful. Yeah, they they uh, they invited us into their house. Uh, their, you know, his dad made us barbecue. It was uh, it was it was a, it was a great time. Um, but it was also like, you know, it was super difficult. Like, cause you know, you don't know, like, you know, even though it's been so many years now, you know, do his parents want to sit there and have an in depth conversation about the day their son died or him? You know what I mean? It's 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 a lot. It's a lot to ask of them. And the fact that they did it and they, you know, were just happy to get his story out and tell their, you know, get to sit and reminisce about their son, I think was like really nice for them. That it was something they really wanted to do. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if uh, Jesus can go into a little bit more about when he contacted them. Uh, yeah, no, I contacted I contacted them through Michael Modest. Uh, he was the one that gave me Flo's information. And then, uh, you know, from there, Richard. Uh, and then, yeah, just making that initial um, um, contact of, hey, you know, this is who we are. Uh, we knew Mark from, you know, the EPW Pro Wrestling Iron Days. And, you know, we have all this footage of him. We'd like to do a, a tribute uh, to him. And I don't think they they, were, they thought it was going to be like that um, professional, you know, because we had the, we brought in a full crew, you know, with Phil and Joaquin. Paul and myself went down to Fresno. We brought in, you know, we had the lights, the cameras, all and everything so i think they were like oh okay like this is this is going to be like a serious uh, thing you know it's not just you know a couple high school students doing like a little piece uh and then through that they informed me like hey would you like to interview uh mark's former wrestling and, and football coach or former teammate i'm like yeah you know yeah definitely definitely want to get everyone's uh, point of view now initially we did um start a gofundme like campaign to raise some funds so we had some money to travel to like say Puerto Rico and Japan, but you know, the, the campaigns, if you're not really on it a lot, like it's not going to get a lot of traction. So even though we didn't get the amount of money we were asking for, uh, we were still able to produce something. Um, but it would have been nice to actually fly out to Puerto Rico and to go to Japan and interview some of the wrestlers there. Because uh, as I was telling you, buddy, before we logged on, there was a lot of wrestlers that uh, aren't in the piece that were contacted and because of scheduling or because of last minute, you know, flaking or whatever, it, it didn't happen. But especially on the Puerto Rico side, there was going to be a lot more content for that for that piece. Yes. Yeah, so but I think you did an amazing job for, you know, getting especially people from in the early years that, you know, haven't been in wrestling for 15, 16 years, you know, uh, uh, for you to track them down 
You know, I I hadn't seen Bart Blackston in quite a long time, and 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 I hadn't seen uh, Vito Tomaselli in quite quite a long time. You know, uh, uh, so it was good to see those guys. You know, and and what their their thoughts were of of the whole thing. So so then so how did you then put it all together? and then put it out for YouTube viewing. Can you explain a little bit about that process? Uh, yeah, I'm, you know, just gathering the footage that we shot, <laughs> excuse me, gathering the footage that we shot and um, alongside with all the archive footage, that takes a lot of time. You know, it, it, you have to capture all these videos in real time. So there's so many games of football that I watched of Mark's and God love Mark, but I fucking hate football. <laughs> I can't I can't stand the sport. So just I'm like, I'm just here stuck in football game and just waiting to hear when his name would get called for you know play or something. So that was uh yeah, and that was probably the most challenging lineman, thing. As an offensive lineman, you don't have really a lot of highlights because you're just blocking. So exactly. You know, I don't know that. <laughs> yes. And then but, all, and then all of a sudden uh, they changed their jersey numbers and then now he's not wearing the same jersey number that I thought he was gonna have. So it was like ah. Oh. Yeah, that was probably the most challenging thing about it. But yeah, so grabbing all this archive footage, obviously the footage that we have. Um, but yeah, I was contacting like people in Puerto Rico or Noah, like, hey, can we use this footage? Can we use that? And then you don't really hear about it. So you kind of like, okay, you know what? Well, we'll just use a little clip of it or something like that. Uh, again, this is a nonprofit um, project. So, you know, I, I, I wouldn't think that we'd have a lot of problems in that regard. But yeah, just putting everything together, edited it on uh, Final Cut Pro, sorry, Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere. And, say, what, uh, what year are you in right now? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Bison's original tribute video that I made was on Final Cut Pro, and, yeah. and that's soon after he passed. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I mean, th we had a lot of cool footage of him. Oh, the the one of the, uh, the biggest finds was his handheld camcorder footage uh, you know, of him in Japan and his first trip there and him kind of recording and commenting on, on everything and going up to Modest's room, like, look, we're in the magazines type stuff. Uh, Mark told me years ago that he had all that footage and he asked me if I wanted it to, to do something. And at the time I was, you know, I was young. I, yeah, sure, sure. And I kind of just put it off and, and then, it, you know, it never happened. Sure. Well, so Paul, you had the ability to, to interview Mark, that one time in that that sort of stage area, you know that that like. Oh, the, that was uh, that was my cousin. Oh, that's your cousin. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. So, um, what were you able to to? How did you find you got that footage from your cousin? Then I guess. Yeah, he had a, a show on public access in uh in Newark, and uh, yeah, my cousin interview. He used to interview a lot of wrestlers uh back then. And then he was the one who got me into, you know, the indie wrestling scene in the Bay Area who because he was working for Kirk White at the time. And he was like, hey, do you want to, like, come help out and do all this? And then that's kind of got me into it. And that's how I met Mark. That's how all of it kind of started. Yeah. yeah so Lewis, that footage. Uh, yeah. Louis Costa. So that it's funny, too. You bring up that footage because, yeah, that footage was from a show that we used to have in Mountain View uh, in, in around 2000 and, and, and beyond. But we also did an APW show out of there. That was produced by us, by Lewis and myself and uh, Roland, and it, we have a lot of APW footage. And interestingly enough, uh, a couple years back, we tried to get uh, a copyright infringement from an old uh, APW brass uh, <laughs> that should remain nameless, but they couldn't. They couldn't. Uh, the copyright didn't stick because it came from our show that we produced for APW. So a lot of the footage that we use is stuff that. We, you know, it's our names are on the on the tape. So, cool. Well, no, it is great that you preserved all that stuff. I mean, you know, you don't know anything's going to be history until later, and then it actually becomes history. So, what what do you feel was like your greatest challenge? What what do you guys both feel was the greatest challenge to making and producing um, uh, 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 the Bison Smith documentary? Going through all that football footage. <laughs> Uh, I'll say uh, some of the biggest things, especially with uh, like on the Michael Modest documentary, uh, we had a little bit more back and forth as far as like me checking out certain versions beforehand. Jesus on this one was very 
gung ho about uh, the uh, the deadline day, so I didn't have a chance to bug him and to to basically help produce <laughs> on this one. But uh, what's it called? I know one of the biggest things is what parts of interviews to include, because there's certain stuff. There's there's certain stories that are very funny, a little off color, <laughs> and uh, might not. And then you have to think like, is this a good story? Yes, but does it fit? to the overall tone of the documentary does it have a place in here that flows well with other scenes you know what i mean it's it's one of those things where it's like because we interviewed you know how long was the interview we did with modest alone the se- the, the oh, one that we did in the restaurant that was like three hours yeah so it's like from three hours you know there, you, there's a lot you gotta you gotta siphon down into i know i years. talked to you guys for an hour and you only have me in for you know maybe Five, six minutes. But what I said to uh, Jesus before the, the, the show, and I'll say it to you, is that if you could take the five minutes of what I said and the best of it, you guys really did capture the things that I really wanted people to know about Mark. So I wanted to thank you guys about that. But how do you make that selection? Because you did a good job, I think. It has to flow. It has to flow with uh, whatever is coming up next. So there's a lot of, like I said earlier, the the actual documentary was about an hour and a half, hour 40. But then it was like, well, now I'm just, now I just have content here just to have content. Like it's not, it doesn't really flow into what this last person said and and, and going into the next thing. Uh, Like, for example, uh, there's some stuff with Seymour Snot, former APW wrestler. And, you know, he would talk about mark and then he would talk about mark in japan it's like okay well now he's talking about now now that kicks us off to mark's japan journey you know so you, i'm always like listening to key key words that can lead me to the next part of the documentary cool what about you paul um i mean when when doing the interviews it's always interesting to see like the difficult part is kind of parsing like what questions are okay and what questions uh because you know it's it's hard to it's hard to to sit there and talk to two people who are still obviously still so many years later grieving for their son and sit there and say like so tell me about the day you found out he died like it's it's you know it's it's rough and it's kind of like like are they gonna be okay with this question like is it is it okay are they gonna like you know and they obviously they were crying and everything like that and these are people that i met that day you know and now i'm face to face with them you know i'm four feet away from them and they're crying talking about their son to me and it's kind of like this weird thing where it's like you know before when we were doing like you know some of the other documentaries it's like hey here's some fun jokes all right isn't it fun look at these fun stories of you know ribs and we isn't this great and then now this is like oh this is serious this is a very serious somber moment and you know there's times during the interviews where you know it's like okay we're going to need a few minutes and they have to like kind of compose themselves a bit and stuff like that. So that to me was, was a little bit of the difficult part of like, also like we have some prepared questions, but sometimes the conversation starts to lead a certain way. And you know, this has a host of a show, Russell, (laughs) you know, it's like sometimes the conversation goes one way and you're like, Oh wait, now it's time to pivot into some other questioning. And maybe that other question I had prepared that I was ready to ask isn't so relevant anymore, you know? So it's kind of like on the fly being able to gauge the conversation. Well, yeah. the, the, sorry. Scheduling also was, was another uh, challenge, especially scheduling yeah. zoom calls and people in different uh, uh, area uh, time zones and, and stuff like that. So that, yeah, that was challenging. Uh, but going back to like the seriousness of the project, um his family and also a lot of the wrestlers have reached out to me personally about how they appreciated the humor in in the humorous parts as well in the piece you know so they had something that that can break that seriousness or 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 the feeling of sadness you know with with a little bit of laughter you know that is one thing is that you guys hadn't done a documentary about someone who died you know and and so that is a a different challenge do you feel like like there was that can I do the people that talked about Mark? Do you feel that it was because it meant a lot to me to say the things that I said about him? What was your reaction and feelings about uh, the way people had talked to you other than, than the Smiths about what Mark meant to them? Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, I think you know, and I can't speak for them, but I think it's kind of. I think like much like yourself, you probably like the idea of like 
you know, your opinions of him and your thoughts of him being on record on something. So, like, when somebody sits there and they're watching old Noah stuff and they're like, man, who's this Bison Smith dude? And then they go, you know, 10 years from now and they go on YouTube and they search for his name and they see this and they go like, oh, dang, this guy was a this guy. Not only was he a good wrestler, but then like you get to see all these other people and their opinions of him and the, him as a person, him as a him as a guy. And you know, there's nothing worse than being a fan of someone and finding out they suck. <laughs> and uh, I think that is like the number one thing. Like my biggest in wrestling specifically, finding out Shawn Michaels sucks <laughs> is like, oh man, he was a dick. And that finding that out was like such a oh, heartbreaking moment. Excuse the pun. Uh, and. Uh, I, I think I like the idea that a lot of people like yourself got a chance to kind of put out there the kind of man he was and the kind of thing that went on, especially like, you know, with the the dumb drama with APW and all that and everything. There might have been some people who maybe had some unkind words to say about him and the other iron guys after they left, you know. And and Jesus, your thoughts? I would say that the, the sincerity that they came across, you know, uh, talking to people, because it, 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 when I first mentioned like, hey, we're going to do a documentary on bison like they were just like oh man yes you know definitely you know I'm, I'm glad you're doing this uh i've also heard from a couple of wrestlers that they are very grateful uh for indie handshake for doing stuff like that because it's guys that you know wwe is not going to make you know a, a, a documentary on them or or give them any kind of exposure so us doing it at a local level uh and doing a professional job at it you know they're very grateful so yeah it was just a sincerity of everyone that wanted to be a part of uh, this documentary. So um, I wanted to give you guys a few minutes so that you could talk about Soleros, because I, I am fascinated with the, first of all, the topic, and then how that came about, and then how your reception has been, and, and what you're doing to, to promote it, and, and, and your thoughts on, on doing Soleros. Yeah, so Soleros is a personal project that I started working in 2012. It's a short documentary about some uh, soul record collectors in uh, San Jose, California. And basically, they, they kind of formed a group of, of people that collected rare soul. So it's not like Motown. It's not nothing mainstream that you might have heard of. This is all very obscure stuff. And yeah, they, they collect, they trade, they sell. Uh, they put out compilations, you know, for people to, to to listen to. And that's how I found out about them. So I always had that interest of who are these people that are putting out these uh, CDs of uh, unreleased or unknown artists and kind of keeping their legacy alive. So it's kind of how what we're doing in Indie Handshake. They're doing it for soul artists that haven't been really recognized. And the reception has been great. Uh, we just had a showing last week at the uh, Roxy Theater in SF. A lot of people came up to me afterwards and, you know, had, had a lot to say about the piece. And, yeah, th that was the first documentary that I've ever entered for anything. So it was good to see <clears throat> that it got selected for a few festivals. And not only that, but it won uh, first place in its category in Texas at the Lone Star Film Festival. So uh, still have a couple of festivals left up until summer. And then uh, and then I'll make it available for everybody. But, yeah, it's... Um, that's cool to see that your work is getting recognized. Now, also, I've been asked why I haven't submitted the wrestling documentaries that we've done for, like, festivals. And, like, the easiest way to answer that would be because of the release, the copyright releases and all that stuff. I would have to have a release for every, you know, for the footage and, and all this stuff we're using. But other than that, you know, I think that'll be our next challenge is to do a documentary where, where it is all original footage or all footage with permission but that one would be have to be on well you scale. do know a lawyer yeah you do know a lawyer if you That's do need right. those releases done so uh, did you work on uh soleros as well no or? no this no. this one is all jesus and uh when he told me about the project i was like oh soul music and filmmaking these are the two things jesus loves more than any, probably anything besides wrestling so i already knew it was a good fit for him so i was i'm very excited for him so what what projects are you working on right now Paul. Well, uh, I, I have an idea for a wrestling podcast. I'm, I'm thinking about bringing back a wrestling podcast, a completely okay, different wrestling kind. Coast to coast is already taken. Oh, this <laughs> one, it's, it's, it's a different idea. I don't want to, I don't want to spill the beans on it. Cause I don't want to, I think I have a good acronym for it. And I think like in many things in wrestling, it'll get stolen. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I will say, I do have an idea for a, a new podcast that I would like to get going. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm doing a lot of photography at wrestling shows. Um, 
every once in a while when the opportunity arises, I've helped co-promote a show. Uh, but uh, mostly just doing photography at local stuff, uh, whether it be uh, for Oasis Pro in Vallejo and Berkeley. Uh, that's uh, Journey Fatu and Juicy Fanau's uh, promotion. Or I do uh, photography for Ugwa here in San Jose. Uh, yeah, just doing – still, of course, involved with the wrestling in the Bay Area. Uh, and music. And then hopefully we go to start – oh, yeah, music too. Yeah, I, I play uh, open mics and play guitar and sing, so that's fun. Well, that's great. So you feel like the indie scene, the wrestling scene is kind of, you know, coming back. It sort of like really got chopped down, obviously, during uh, COVID. And, you know, no one could do any live shows. And, and everybody kind of went underground for a while. And, <laughs> you know, do you feel like maybe the Indian scene is beginning to come back in the Bay Area here? Absolutely. I feel like there are certain promotions like West Coast Pro Wrestling, which consistently sell out. Uh, Hood Slam consistently sells out. Um, Agua is 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 a you know a smaller promotion in San Jose, but they do you know few hundred, five hundred at, at the Emporium in San Francisco. Sometimes you know what I mean it's like things are going good. However, there are also uh, a lot of other promotions popping up at the same time and. Uh, Bubbles can only get so big so uh, <laughs> before something happens. So I, th I do think there's also going to be uh, a lot of those coming to a little bit of a reality check in the next couple of years that might fade off. Uh, and also, you know, but that won't be for the next two months. Probably a few more will pop up as it is tax season. So uh, a lot of people got some returns and they're going to run a show. <laughs> what are your tax season pro. What are your thoughts, uh, Jesus? Uh, I'm not really uh, up to speed with a lot of wrestling nowadays. I kind of stayed in that 2000s era. Like, that's kind of like where I stayed as far as what I like to watch. Uh, once in a while, you know, I'll hang out with Paul and go to a show. Um, you know, I'll, I'll watch AEW here and there, but I don't really follow uh, the scene too much. You know, I just I just see whatever's posted on uh, Facebook or uh, Indie Dependent and uh, and see what they're doing. But other than that, I you know I, I go to shows here and there. I go to mainly lucha shows because you know my friends are wrestling and then you know we go and have a couple of beers and, and just hang out. But yeah, I'm not really too. Uh, uh, um, I don't really know what's going on too much in the scene now. Jesus is the old man yelling at the cloud right now. Is what he? Is. I am. <laughs> I used to be a finisher in my day. <laughs> so what's, so before, what's in real quick. Before yes, I forget, yes. buddy, I, I, there's something that I want to clarify with you. Uh, every time you say this, it, it like jabs a, 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 a dagger in my heart. But every time that you talk about the story of, of Bison uh, as Super Destroyer, or even, even as Mark Bison Smith, when he would get into it with the ICP uh, uh, oh, fans God, that you, you, that you call them. So they are not ICP fans. They are not Juggalos. <laughs> they're a, they're fans of a group called Corporate Avenger who also paint their face. But as a former Juggalo, I was always like, oh, they're not Juggalos. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. We we always yeah. thought that they were they were trying to. I mean, because they they even had like one of them was big and the other one was small, so they really did yeah. look like the insane clown posse guys. And that, that's just how <laughs> Mark knew them. We just when they would come to Vallejo and my. God, I mean, Mark was the nicest guy in the whole world. And we, we say it over and over again, but you didn't say it in the documentary, but it's true. The, those, there were two guys dressed up as, as those guys, the, the yeah, two yeah. clowns. They would dress up as two clowns. They looked like the insane clown posse. And God, did they get under Mark's skin. <laughs> Mark just absolutely hated him. Well, first of all, yeah. you know, because he was wearing the mask, but they knew it was Mark Smith, they would constantly go, Mark, Mark, you know, and they, they you know, try to get him out of character. And then yeah. that would make him even angrier. And I really did have to, like, push my arms against him and actually hold him physically back from, like, punching him. And I think they did get after him in the parking lot once, but then oh, they kind of, like, they were, like, like a bunch of cars away and like like said stuff to Mark and he was gonna like weave his way through the cars to get to him and they got in their car and took off and then we never saw him. <laughs> so yeah, though yeah. I mean that was just talk about someone that got the goat of 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 Mark and all the time that he wrestled that he was usually so good with the crowds and everything, especially when he was a face, you know, when he moved turned back to being a face. But it, it, it what it also did was it gave us that that heat of having the audience react to us in that like way. And it sort of became sort of like a, a match that wasn't even part of the match. 
just having Mark just constantly, you know, and me yell at those guys from the 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 uh, 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 the the uh, uh, crazy ICP clowns. So yeah. you know, no, it was, uh, I almost added I almost added that part in the documentary because you bring them up in the interview, and I almost did a little side note: these are not juggalos. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is like, really no, that's funny. that's that's too petty. <laughs> That's great. So, so tell me, guys, what are you, what's in the future? Like, are there going to be any more new wrestling documentaries that you guys are going to put together? To be a full buddy, Satella one? No, you. Just, <laughs> you know, I've, I've had enough fame as it is with the. That's why I do this show. So, uh, but but tales, I, tales from the Palm Pilot. Yes, thank you, thank you. But like, uh, I mean, I I think a full fledged like I mean almost a dark side of the ring type documentary could be made about APW you know in a lot of ways uh, it's a lot it, that goes on well the, the, the interesting thing is now I feel like it, there, there are some people that we were talking about possibly doing some stuff about because we, before we were kind of like doing like blue skying like all these different ideas like oh what about if we did something on this something on this something on this uh we even floated around the idea of doing a full-on xpw one and then of course dark side of the ring had their own xpw episode and that kind of ruined that whole idea so that's not going to happen probably uh because they kind of placed it all on there so um yeah what's it called uh but the good thing is now there was and i'm not going to say who or what we're do- talking about? We are talking about a another lesser known promotion in in California, who maybe was a predecessor to a bigger one, if that may, might make sense. Um, and at first, we kind of weren't getting any kind of you know ideas about like them wanting to be involved. However, now that some projects have come out and they've seen the quality of them, it seems like they might be more receptive to doing it. So that is the one thing is the feedback that we're getting, the constant stuff that's happening. Now, these are like good proofs of concept to to go to some of these guys who might not want to reopen stuff and talk about these things and be like, well, this is what the kind of work we're doing is. And are you interested? As opposed to before being like, well, we have an idea. And like Jesus said, they don't know if we're going to show up. We're going to be a bunch of high school kids with with, you know, iPhones being like, well, this is our documentary, man. <laughs> like, so, yeah. Yeah, no, and then for me, it's uh, you know uh, I am working on other non wrestling documentaries too. So a lot of the times, uh, my availability too has has uh, changed. Um, as I was working on Mark's documentary, I was also editing uh, another project for for a different thing. So it was like, okay, you know, you kind of have to prioritize prioritize things. But I mean, it's doable. I'm, I, I'd like like I always say like, okay, this is gonna be the last one because it took a, it takes a lot of work and preparation and editing. And then once it's out there and, and people are accepting it, and you're like, oh, okay, all right, we've got to do another one. we got to do another one. And I may be the, the – I'm not going to say the wrong person to be editing these, but um, I still have, like, this feeling that I need to protect the business in some senses. So there's a lot of stuff that I don't put because I'm like, you know what? This is going to make this person look this way, or they're, they're talking about something that – the negative that may ha- that happened or may have happened, you know, stuff like that. So I'm like, that's why the dark side of the rings do so well because they do want that. They want to get the dirt. They want to. They want that stuff. And I'm more of like, nah. I'm still trying to protect. <laughs> I'm still trying to protect indie wrestling or the business in, in in some cases. So I'm like, well, you know, if I was someone else, these will be a lot more juicier, I guess. <laughs> to to their detriment too, because you know they did the whole New Jack episode and yet they didn't bother to ask Vic Grimes. Right. Anything. I, I did think that was fascinating, but uh, unless Vic didn't want to cooperate with them, I don't know. Uh, according to Vic, it's because he said it's a work, <laughs> and that's why they didn't want him because they're they they want the narrative that New Jack is crazy, and it was all impromptu. So that yeah. you're not going to ask the guy who said it was all a work, brother. You know what I mean? It's yeah. I guess so. And I and I enjoy watching them. Like I watch them, but. Um... As far as, as myself personally doing a project like that, I, I just I'm not like a clickbait person. Like, oh, let, you know, this person gonna talk smack about this person, whatever, you know. And, and the podcast, it's it, it's a different thing. When I'm interviewing someone in the podcast, if they want to bring up something, if they want to talk shit about something, then that's on them, you know. But I'm not baiting people. Yeah. Like, oh, let's see if they'll talk about this or that. Yeah, people impromptu talking about something is different than us editing something and putting it out there because now it is like a tacit uh, endorsement of what is happening. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now people are going to be like, oh, why'd you 
why'd you guys put out this thing about this guy? It's like, uh, sorry, but that's what they said. But if we put yeah. out a full on edited piece about it, then then the, we then that is ours. We have to own it. And that is well, I, I hope, I, you know, if you're going to own anything, owning that bison documentary is worth owning because they it really was a wonderful tribute to a guy that really had no enemies if you really want to talk about that i mean really I mean, you probably had to search far far and wide to have something really negative about bison because everyone admired the way he worked everyone admired the way that he treated other people everyone admired the way that he was dedicated to his family and to to his friends and that he just he never big timed anybody that's one thing about mark he never let the fame of what he did or what he accomplished ever make him treat somebody else differently than he did when he was just starting out at APW. His humility and his sense of understanding about who he was and what he was with the world around him is the thing that, you know, you use that quote for me in the movie and, and, and he was never bigger than what was going on around him. And I think that was a really important thing. Is there, we have a couple minutes left. Is there anything that you made during the documentary, but you weren't able to include something you would like to say about Mark Smith or something you learned about Mark that you didn't get to say in the documentary? Uh, just off the top of my head, I mean, uh, his brother, <coughs> Jason talked about Mark being in the band, Mark playing bass. That's something that I didn't know, you know, uh, they didn't have pictures of him, but that would have been interesting to know or show, you know, is that he was in the band, uh, you know, like, uh, I, I wish I could have gone a little bit deeper on that. Um, can you think of anything? Uh, you know, not really. I just um, wish we had more of the Puerto Rico uh, stuff. But like I said before, it was due to uh, you know, wrestlers for whatever reason not being available or changing, you know, the schedules, times, or not getting back to me. But um, and was I the Ring of Honor stuff that. was the Ring of Honor stuff hard to get? Also, I uh, no, I, I got that from uh, the fight, uh, fight network, fighting network. Um, so I just grabbed that piece. I did reach out to ROH, didn't hear back, but you know, this is what it is. Uh, they were they were in the middle of being sold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, um, I, I really, I really think. Uh, the more interesting stuff was that that I'm glad we 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 included was all the personal stuff. So, I mean, I'm sure it like I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I'm sure you know within the hours and hours we talked to his family, there's probably some stuff here and there that we could have included or could have been in there. Uh, again, it's a choice of like what project is this? What are we doing? Uh, I'm also like really glad that it's not just like an info do dump doc because I feel like you know. It, interview if we we could have easily just been another youtube channel that has no interviews and a bunch of like and then this year bison smith left apw and then in this year he won tag team things at roh and then this year he went to our no like we didn't really include a lot of that there was like jesus i think put the perfect amount of that kind of stuff in because like anyone can go on cage match and look up his his, his history of matches like you don't we don't need to put all that in the documentary you know it, the more personal yeah. stuff is more important I don't That's think we include great. a lot of his uh, title, uh, a lot of his title wins because it was like, okay, well now we have to show every title he's won, but that's not really what you know, the, what the doc is. The doc is about him and how people felt about him, you know, regardless if he had a you know championship titles or not. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And it with that really got to feel like I had my kids watch it too because I wanted them to to understand who a guy is a big part of my life for a number of years and a good friend and, and what, you know, he meant to, to everybody. And there's stuff I have, you know, a picture of, of me and Mark on the wall and, and, and stuff like that. And, and my old APW posters and things like that. And, 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 you know, that was a big part of my life for, for a while. And it's, I don't want to just forget it, even though the tragedy of losing him, makes me sad and thinking about it makes me sad. You know, um, I, I don't want Mark ever to be forgotten. And I want to thank you guys for making sure that Mark is not going to be forgotten. You know, that documentary will be there to remind us of the great man that he was. So um, how, as we're wrapping up here, how can um, our fans get a hold of you guys? And what are your next like immediate projects that they should be on the lookout for? Uh, you can find me or you can find us at 
Indie Handshake on all platforms. Just indie Handshake. Uh, me personally, JX Cruz 510 on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. Upcoming projects. Uh, we're going to have another meeting as Indie Handshake and see what the next project will be. And then uh, for myself, I have another Soletos type, but with another group from uh, Southern um, California. Nice. You can find me at the Paul Ponte on all social media stuff. You can see my wrestling photography, uh, music, all that kind of thing uh, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Um, also, uh, music stuff's on there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. Once we once we figure out the next project is, we could start. I feel like it's one of those things where it's like it's hard to it's hard to narrow in on what what to do next until we really narrow down what the next piece is going to be because then we can start doing all the fun stuff like pre-production yeah absolutely well you know just keep me informed on the stuff that you guys are doing and i really want to thank you for taking the time out today and i i really want to help promote uh the bison smith documentary because you guys did just a great job and 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 want to thank you again for all your hard work to make a wonderful touching documentary about a really nice guy so um uh, uh thank you so much for being here and we'll have you on the show again in the future i'm sure when you have your next big project coming in so we're looking forward to that and until then everybody have a great sunday um and i guess no no super bowl for either one of you guys or you, i'll you, be watching i, I don't really care who I don't, I don't care who wins, but I'm watching. No, it. I, I, weren't you a Raiders fan? I think. No, a Niners fan. Niners fan. Niner. Oh, okay. Then you're yeah. really sore about uh, what uh, who's in there right now. Like oh, me, yeah. it's like if it could end nothing to nothing, you know, and be a tie, I'd be, I'd, I'd be okay with it. So. No, that's uh, a McCaffrey's quote. I hope both teams lose. Yeah, I hope both teams find yeah. this as well. I'm, I'm with you on that. Anyway, it's great catching up with you guys. It's always good to see you again. And we'll uh, have you on the show again in the near future, I hope. Good. Thank Absolutely. you, buddy. All right, everybody. Good afternoon. And, and we'll see, see everyone soon. Thanks. And that is the recording. All right, guys. Yeah, sorry so. about being late. I was I was making spam masubi for my Super Bowl party I'm going to, <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, oh shit, it's eleven. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> That's fine. No, you you had a lot of really good points on the show, and and we really appreciate it. So I'll have this uploaded and uh, uh, available for uh, uh, viewing uh, probably you know later tonight, like around nine or ten o'clock. So I'll send you guys the link. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. All right, I guys. To, I, wanted to, I wanted to make a joke, but I was like, oh, if they haven't seen the documentary yet, they might get, get confused. I was going to do the, no one had, when you said no one had a negative thing to say about Bison Smith, I'd be like, yeah, Bison Smith was great. Fuck Bison Smith. Bison yeah. Smith's amazing. <laughs> yes, from his Fuck own that words. guy. From his own words. That's hilarious. <laughs> But, but I was like, I was like, if they haven't seen the documentary, they're gonna be very confused about what the hell I'm talking about. So I'm not oh, gonna. That's sound, no, that's perfect. The sound bite they're gonna get for you. He said, "Fuck my sister." Exactly. <laughs> They'll be like, one of the one of the guys who helped make the documentary. He, he just started fucking shooting on the guy. We don't know what's happening. <laughs> you guys are too much. Hey, it's great seeing you again. Yeah, of course. All you right. Too. All right. Have a good one. Good night. Goodbye, every. Goodbye, guys. All right. Later.